Okay, everybody, we're going to do something kind of quick. It's actually to do with triggers. I get a lot of questions in the Discord channel about how triggers work and why they work the way they do and what we can do with them. And in this case, we're going to have a bit of an ambush when a player comes into the middle here. You see we've got some VFX going off and uh, we've got a few of these zombies coming after us or creatures. So we're going to make all of this happen with verse. It's kind of interesting. Let's make it happen. Before we get too far into this, though, I do want to say thank you to everybody over on Patreon. You guys are the best. There's a reason why these show up early there. And of course, all the code. OK, let's get into this. OK, as usual, we are inside of UAFN and we're going to take a look at all of the devices that I've used to make this tutorial. We've got a VFX device because that's what kind of lit up when I stepped on the trigger. Speaking of the trigger, it's right here hidden sort of in the grass and I made it invisible in the game. That's an option in the details panel that you can hide the trigger with the visible in game option. And then I've got three creature placers, one there, one there and one over there. So that when somebody comes through this section here, that they have to get through these creatures before they can move on to the next section. And we've got our game device here. We've got our two spawners and there's an item grinder that's sort of hidden underneath the landscape. Doesn't matter where you put this, this runs sort of automatically in the background, never visible in the game. And that's everything for this tiny little tutorial. Let's get into how the verse code works. OK, so this is our verse file. It's pretty basic, not very long, but it's got a few things in here I want to draw attention to. Again, like I said, it's going to be a bit of an easy one. If you don't know how to make a verse file, there is a tutorial in the description below. But I'm also starting a brand new series on beginner verse. So we are going to cover every little tiny thing in that series, which should be out very soon. OK, so we've got our game manager device, which is something we create for every game. And in here we've got some editables and all of these editables are just so that we can have access to the devices that I just finished showing you in the game. We've got our spawners, two of them, P1 and P2. We've got our step trigger, the trigger that we step on, which is a trigger device. And then we've got our creature placers one, two and three. These are creature placer devices. Now, remember, all of these devices live in the Fortnite devices folder in the content browser. You can find them inside of here. You just drag them onto the scene and we control them in here by making them editable so that if we go ahead and click our game manager device, which is our custom device that lives here, it's invisible, but this is where I put it. We can look over in the details panel and we can see all of the devices that we want to hook up to this live here in scene. So that's how we connect them. All right, moving on to actual code. So we've got our VFX spawner, we've got our creature placers. These are all going to be controlled. We have one variable here, which is used to sort of reset the amount of time it takes for an ambush to happen. I've set it to be false by default so that we can set off the ambush when a player shows up. But you'll see in a second how we set that to true. Wait a little time to set to false. And that's going to be the trigger on whether or not the trigger itself goes off. OK, so in on begin, which is always running when our game starts up, we listen to the spawn event of both player spawners, although we're not doing anything with it. And we have our step trigger triggered event subscription. So we subscribe to that and we're going to call on step on trigger, which is right here. Now, here is the tricky part about triggers that people seem to not be aware of, is that it takes an optional agent. Optional agents are where the trigger is saying, we're not sure if an agent is triggering this, so we're going to make it an optional. And an optional has a question mark ahead of it of its type. So it's not just agent. If we were to take this out, we're going to get some red squigglies here. This is going to say there's a problem. This is also going to be like, what are you doing here? This doesn't belong here. So we put that question mark back in. Now, what we want to do is we want to convert a maybe agent, so an optional agent, to an actual agent. We want to check to see if this is an actual agent, which is a player in the game, but is the very highest parent class for the player in the game. So we will use an if statement to do this. We'll go if, and we've declared this variable name as agent of agent type equals maybe agent question mark. So it's kind of like saying, is this an agent? And this is how we would do that. Is maybe agent an agent, like an actual agent object? If so, grab this agent variable, which is an agent object. We could call this player. You can call this character. You can call this anything you want. Then we're going to spawn. And if you're not sure what spawning is and sleeping is, I've done a whole tutorial on sleep. Search it up. 
or I'll put it in the description below. And then we're going to spawn ambush player passing in the agent object because we're going to need it. All right, so let's go take a look at ambush player. Ambush player takes agent as its first argument. And then we use the suspends because we want to sleep. We want to put a pause on the thread. And we're not passing anything back, so it's void. And then we're going to check to see if we've ambushed the player yet. And if it's false, then do all of this, which means we're going to find the four character because we need to know their position. We're going to move our VFX device to that position with the teleport to. That's by getting the transform translation and the transform rotation of the fort character. You can't get the position of the player on anything other than the fort character. So that's why we're getting the fort character. Then we're going to spawn our show VFX, which means we're going to call another method that has a bit of a delay in it. We're going to just spawn that show VFX, which lives right here. Very simple. It enables our VFX, sleeps for five seconds. So it does a couple of lightning strikes and then disables and stops showing a lightning strike on our player because we've moved it there. So we're going to grab our player's current health and then we're going to minus 20 off of it here because the lightning strike is a bit damaging. So we grab the current health uh, in a variable, which is a float, which means it has a decimal point. That's from using the get health method on the fort character. And then we're going to set the health with current health minus 20.0, which means if they had 100, they'd have 80 after this call. And then we're going to set ambush player to true. We're going to spawn all of our creatures. We're going to sleep for 10 seconds so that what happens is when a player steps onto the trigger, if they step on it again right away, we don't want it to go off again. It would be weird. Um, we want this to be an ambush. So it's a bit of a time based thing. So for 10 seconds, we'll assume they're not going to step on it. Uh, but if they do after 10 seconds, it is going to set ambush player to false after setting it to true. And if this comes out as false, when this runs and this runs when the trigger is stepped on, then we're going to get three more creatures and we're going to get more lightning. And that is the whole of this tutorial. Very simple. And I think it's important to talk about how triggers work because quite a few people are getting them kind of wrong. And it's mainly because of this optional thing. Optionals are kind of weird. This is how you deal with them. It's pretty simple. Um, and so hopefully this tutorial has laid that out nicely. Any questions, let me know anytime and I will see you guys in the next one.